Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Are you wondering what are the best sugars and sweeteners for your long-term food storage? There are many products on the market, but that doesn't mean that we need to stash and stockpile all of them. I have five suggestions and recommendations for sugars and sweeteners for your long-term food storage. The first one is white granulated sugar. Granulated sugar is simple to find, it's inexpensive, it's easy to store. Granulated sugar can be made from sugar cane or sugar beets. I prefer to buy the cane sugar that comes from sugar cane and try to avoid when possible the sugar beet sugar simply because sugar beets are becoming a GMO plant. Granulated sugar is simple to store, it lasts nearly forever. The only problem is it can get hard from the moisture, so you want to seal out the air as much as possible. You can seal it in plastic containers, make sure that they're airtight. You can also seal it into glass canning jars. It works better if you use the metal lid rather than just a plastic lid, which isn't as airtight as the metal rings and lids. Never use an oxygen absorber when you want to store sugar. If you want, you can store sugar in a bucket. I've been able to get free five gallon buckets at the grocery store, go to the bakery and ask for them. I bring them home, wash them in the dishwasher and they're ready to go. If you want, you can store your sugar into a canning jar. You can take the canning jars and you can store those in the bucket or you can use the Mylar packaging, seal it up, but never use oxygen absorbers with sugar. When you're choosing buckets and lids, make sure that your lid has the little rubber ring around it. That's what's going to seal it up. If your lid is missing the rubber ring, it's not going to make an airtight seal. Then you can seal up your Mylar if that's what you're using. Put your jars inside, push the lid on hard, but make sure when you're using big buckets that you get a lid wrench so that you can get those buckets open again when you need to. I use a lot of brown sugar so I like to buy brown sugar. Brown sugar is the opposite of white sugar. You need to keep the moisture in and the air out. So it's the same thing. You still need to seal it up as carefully as possible. Brown sugar tends to get hard, but there are several ways that you can soften it. I'll put a link to a video I made about how to soften your brown sugar if that's a problem for you. Brown sugar is actually a mixture of white granulated sugar and molasses. Molasses is a byproduct of the sugar that they've taken out the molasses when they purified it and made it white. So to make the brown sugar, you can mix white sugar with molasses and uh, I'll post a video on how I've done that in case that's something you want to do. I also store brown sugar in the canning jars. I just put the lid on, use the metal lid and a metal ring, seal it up, and I've had very good luck with these. I have had the sugar get hard when I've used the white lids and so the white plastic lids are not optimum for uh, long-term storage of your foods. You can buy your brown sugar if you want, store it in your canning jars, and also put that in a bucket. But remember, if you have a lot of white sugar and some molasses, you can make brown sugar for your long-term storage. It's not something that you need to store unless you use a lot of it like I do. The white sugar is going to last a lot longer, so you need to rotate your brown sugar every few years to make sure that you're keeping it uh, fresh as possible. Do you like to use powdered sugar? Well, if it's something that you use, also you need to store it so that it stays dry. I don't store powdered sugar very often because I know I can make my own powdered sugar also from granulated sugar. You just put the granulated sugar into the blender and it whips it all up and it's basically just cutting it up into finer pieces and that's how you're getting your fresh powdered sugar. I'll put a link to that video too in case powdered sugar is something you want to make. Honey is a natural sweetener. It's a great sweetener to keep. It's a great food to have in your food storage. Not only is it a good for food but it has a lot of medicinal purposes as well. You want to get as natural a honey as possible 
And don't ever buy it at somewhere like the Dollar Tree because if you look at the package, it tells you it's not really honey. It's like corn syrup. So read your ingredients to make sure you're getting honey. If you can get it as close to from a farmer, as close to nature as possible, honey is going to be your best bet. A great way to try to find honey is sealed in a can. Honey tends to get hard over time. It doesn't mean it's spoiled. You just need to warm it carefully in a bowl of hot water. Never boil it, never put it in the microwave. The next sweetener that I like is maple syrup. Look for real maple syrup. It's very expensive, but it lasts forever and it is so delicious. I know when I didn't have a lot of money as a young mother, I used to make my own pancake syrup for my kids because I couldn't afford anything like this. You can make your own pancake syrup with, guess what? your white sugar and some brown sugar. I used to put one cup of white sugar with one cup of brown sugar, one cup of water, and then I used to get a little bottle of maple flavoring, like maple extract, maple flavoring, like you find vanilla extract, and I used to add a little bit of that. And I would heat it up until the sugars dissolved, and my kids grew up thinking that was maple syrup. And to this day, they prefer maple syrup that's the pancake syrup over real maple syrup. I saved a lot of money that way. Making your own pancake syrup can help stretch your food dollars a long ways. Molasses is a good natural sweetener to store and stockpile if it's something that you like to use. Some people like to add a few drops to their coffee. I use it if I need to make brown sugar. You can also add molasses when you're baking pots of beans. It adds a nice, sweet, rich flavor to your baked bean recipes. A sweetener that I've recently become aware of is the agave syrup. I found this when I was down in Arizona. Agave syrup comes from the agave plant that grows in like the warm deserts in Mexico and Central America. They use agave to make tequila but it's also a natural sweetener and it's considered to be as long lasting as something like honey. And a good thing to know about agave is if you're a vegan, you don't eat honey, you can eat agave because it's purely from plants. It's also can be used as a sweetener for uh, diabetics because it's on the low glycemic index. If you're a diabetic and you haven't heard about agave, that might be something you want to look into and speak to your medical professional and see if that is something you could use to substitute. Agave is sweeter than sugar, and so if you wanted to substitute this into your recipes rather than granulated sugar, you would use maybe um, two-thirds of a cup of agave compared to one cup of sugar, but then it's liquid, so you would need to reduce the liquid in your recipes by maybe a fourth to a third of a cup. You can put just a few drops of this in to sweeten a drink naturally, and you can even substitute it in recipes that you might have used maple syrup or honey, but they have a distinctive flavor, that, and that's not going to be the same if you sweeten with agave. Agave has been around since the time of the Aztecs, even if we haven't been aware of it. It's a nice sweetener, it's natural from the agave plant, and the shelf life is nearly forever, just like honey or maple syrup. So if, you ha if you're looking for a new sweetener to try that's natural, look for the agave. So if I could only stockpile four sugars, I would use the white sugar, honey, maple syrup, and molasses. I wouldn't store the brown sugar because then I could make it. I wouldn't store powdered sugar because then I could make it. And if I had room for one more kind of sweetener, I think I would consider putting in some agave. Don't store any sweeteners that you don't normally use. If you've never used molasses, then you probably don't want to start storing it just because someone else said that they use it. Figure out the sugars that you use, the sweeteners that you use, and those are the ones that you want to make sure you have enough of so that you have the things you need. I don't recommend using or storing artificial sweeteners. They're really not good for you and there's no reason to store up something that isn't good for you when you could store up foods that are nutritious that would have more value 
in your food storage and in your nutritional, uh, meeting the nutritional needs of yourself and your family. But it's up to you. Always store what you want, what you hope to find. Food storage is personal. There is no one size fits all. There is no one perfect answer. There are lots of foods that last a long time. They're easy to store and can be very inexpensive. And then there are very expensive choices too. So it's up to you what fits your tastes and desires, your budget, and the space that you have to store the things in your home. If you're looking to store sugars and sweeteners, these are my recommendations. Leave me a comment on the ones that you think are vital for you to have so that we can all learn and share from the comments that we leave to each other. Learn more at alaskagranny.com. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.